Hi, this is Miss Vital. This podcast is on cell communication and is meant for AP Biology. It corresponds with Chapter 11 in the textbook. Cell to cell communication is absolutely essential for multicellular organisms. In order for an organism to develop, survive, and reproduce, its billions of cells must communicate to coordinate activities. Biologists have discovered universal mechanisms of cellular regulation. This is evidence for the evolutionary relatedness of all life. What do cells talk about? One topic of cell conversation is sex. The yeast used for making bread, beer, and wine, which is a type of Saccharomyces, identify their mates by chemical signals. There are two sexes, the A and the alpha. The A secrete factors which are chemical signals that bind to receptors on the alpha. The alpha secrete factors which bind to receptors on the A's. The binding of these receptors on their partners cause the cells to grow towards each other and to fuse. Signal transduction pathways are the process by which a signal on a cell surface is converted into a specific cellular response. In multicellular organisms, communication between cells can be close together or far apart. Local regulators are secreted by cells and they influence cells in the vicinity. For example, growth factors in animal cells are a type of parasite signaling. Growth factors stimulate nearby cells to grow and multiply. In the animal nervous system, this is a type of synaptic signaling. The nerve cell secretes neurotransmitters to a nearby cell that almost touches the first cell. Electrical signal transmit the length of the nerve cell triggers secretion of the neurotransmitter into the synapsis. Local signaling in plants is not as well understood because of cell walls they use different mechanisms. Hormones are used by both plants and animals, and they use chemical signals for long-distance communication. Animals have an endocrine system. Those are their hormones, and they are for signaling. Special cells release hormones into the circulatory system. Then they target other parts of the body. For example, a plant hormone, ethylene, promotes ripening. Animals produce insulin, which regulate blood sugar. Cells also communicate by direct contact with direct junctions and substances freely pass between cells. Also, molecules on the surface communicate with each other. When a cell receives a signal, it must be recognized by a specific receptor molecule. The information is then changed into another form, which is transduced before the cell can respond. Earl W. Sutherland won the Nobel Prize in 1971 for work on chemical messages via signal transduction. The process consists of three stages. The first is reception. The target cell's detection of a signal from the outside is reception. The chemical signal is detected when it binds to a protein on the outside of the cell. Transduction is when the receptor protein on the outside of the cell is changed by the signal molecules. The signal is changed into a form that causes a response by the cell. Transduction is usually a series of steps, which is the signal transduction pathway. Third is the response. The transduced signal causes a specific cellular response. A molecular signal sent by one cell is processed and converted into a response by a series of steps known as signal transduction. Signaling molecules bind to specific receptors within the membrane. The signaling molecule bound to the receptor causes the release of a second messenger molecule into the cytoplasm. The signal is relayed through a series of molecules by chemical or conformational changes. In one type of signal transduction, the transfer of a phosphate molecule relays the signal. A cascade of phosphorylations can amplify the original signal.
Eventually, the signal is converted into a response, such as activation of an enzyme within the cytoplasm, or activation of a transcription factor. If a transcription factor is activated, it enters the nucleus and binds to DNA. A change in gene expression is one possible outcome of signal transduction. There are three major types of membrane receptors. The first are G-protein-linked receptors. This membrane receptor works with the help of a G-protein. G-proteins have seven helixes. They function as an on-off switch. If GDP is bound, G-protein is inactive. If GTP, which is similar to ATP, is bound, then the G-protein is active. When receptors attach to signal molecules, the inside of the cell, part of the receptor can bind to the G protein, which then becomes active with the GTP. The active G protein then binds to an enzyme, and it becomes altered, and then also becomes active and creates a cellular response. G protein receptor systems are widespread and diverse. For example, they are important in embryonic development, G proteins guide development. They are important in smell and vision, which depend on G proteins. Bacteria that cause botulism, pertussis, and cholera secrete toxins that interfere with G proteins. Tyrosine kinase receptors are used when the cell needs to regulate and coordinate many activities at once. Growth factors, which regulate cell growth and reproduction, often bind to tyrosine kinase receptors. The cytoplasmic side of the TK receptor acts as an enzyme that helps transfer a phosphate from ATP to tyrosine, which is an amino acid. The receptor is activated in two steps. The first step, the ligand binding, causes two receptor polypeptides to form a dimer. A dimer is a protein made of two polypeptides. The second step is when this activates the TKs, which can now add a phosphate to the tyrosines. Now the receptor protein is fully activated. Specific proteins bond to it and many transduction pathways are activated and cellular responses occur. The third type is the ion channel receptors. Protein pores that open or close in response to a chemical signal are considered ion channel receptors. This blocks ion flow. When the ligand binds to the ion channel proteins, it opens up allowing ions to flow in. When the ligand leaves, the channel closes. This is important in the nervous system. Some signal receptors are dissolved in the cytoplasm or the nucleus instead of the cell membrane. The chemical messenger passes through the cell membrane. Steroids and thyroid hormones work this way, as does nitric oxide, NO, which is a gas. Steroids like testosterone are secreted by the testes. They travel through the blood and enter the target cell. The testosterone binds to receptors in the cytoplasm and it activates it. It enters the nucleus and turns on genes that control male sex characteristics. These become transition, transcription factors. In signal transduction pathways, once the receptors are activated, the transduction phase is multi-step. This process can multiply the effect. These pathways relay signals from the receptor to result in a cellular response. It's like dominoes. The activated receptor activates another protein, which activates another, etc., until the final response is achieved. Protein phosphorylation plays a major role. This is when protein is activated by adding a phosphate group. Protein kinase is an enzyme that transfers a phosphate from an ATP to a protein, which activates it. Most phosphorylation occurs at amino acids. The two most common amino acids are theranine or serine. Protein kinases relay the signal down a cascade. Protein kinases are very important. Protein phosphatases removes, remove phosphate from proteins, turning off signal transduction pathways. Certain small molecules and ions are key components of signaling pathways. Some signal pathways use non-protein molecules or ions called second messengers. They spread rapidly through the cell. For example, Cyclic AMP carries signals from the plasma membrane of the liver or muscle cells initiated by epinephrine. This results in glycogen breakdown in a cell. Two second messengers are used, AMP and calcium ions. 
Many signal molecules in animals cause an increase in calcium in the cytoplasm. Calcium ions are used as second messengers. An increase in calcium can cause muscle contractions, secretions, cell division. They can also help plants deal with drought or with cold. Calcium ion concentration is usually higher on the outside of the cell than the inside. For example, 10,000 times greater in blood cells on the outside than inside the cells. If a small increase in calcium ions occurs in the cytoplasm, the calcium ions are pumped into the mitochondria. This shows the completed pathway leading to the release of glucose from glycogen in the liver. Signaling pathways with many steps multiply the response and contribute to the specificity of the response. Some pathways regulate the production of enzymes as opposed to regulating the activity of enzymes. Here you see how a signaling pathway activates a transcription factor that turns a gene on. The specificity of cell signaling. In this diagram, you see that the particular proteins a cell possesses determines what signal molecules it responds to and the nature of the response. The four cells in this diagram respond to the same signal, the orange triangle, in different ways because each has a different set of proteins, the purple and green shapes. Note, however, that the same kinds of molecules can participate in more than one pathway. The efficiency of a signal transduction may be increased by scaffolding proteins. These are large proteins with several relay proteins attached. This enhances the speed and accuracy of signal transfers. WAS is Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome. It is the absence of a signal relay protein in the immune system. It can cause abnormal bleeding, eczema, infections, and leukemia. For cells in multicellular organisms to remain alert and capable of responding to incoming signals, each molecular change in a pathway must only last a short time. If a component becomes locked in one state, dire consequences can result, for example, cholera. When signals leave receptors, receptors become inactive, therefore causing relay molecules to become inactive. The cells then become ready to receive a new signal. Apoptosis is programmed or controlled cell suicide. The cell is chopped and packaged into vesicles that are digested by scavenger cells. Apoptosis prevents enzymes from leaking out of a dying cell and damaging neighboring cells. It is important in shaping an organism during embryonic development. This was first studied in C. elgins, a small soil worm. Apoptosis was triggered by signals that activate a cascade of suicide proteins in cells that will die. CED9 is a protein in the mitochondria that prevents apoptosis. This is overridden by a death signal. This activates proteases which break up proteins and nucleases which break up DNA. The main proteases of apoptosis are called capsaices. In humans, apoptosis may play a role in the nervous system diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Cancer may also result from the failure of cell suicide.